I thought it could be interesting to take a look at President Roosevelt's New Deal programs. The circumstances in within which they were created are not unlike what's going on today. And they say history repeats itself, so maybe we can learn something. The term New Deal was first coined in a speech that Roosevelt gave in July of 1932 and accepting the Democratic nomination for president. After winning the election in November, in the first 100 days of his presidency, he created a whole suite of agencies and programs to address the growing unemployment that was the result of the bank failure creating the Great Depression. There are two in particular that I would like to look at. The CCC, which is the Civilian Conservation Corps, and the WPA, Workers' Progressive Administration. Those two programs had an impact here in McDonough County and I think are worth looking at. The CCC was active across the country, which was divvied up into nine corps. The state of Illinois was part of the sixth corps, which included Wisconsin, Illinois, and Michigan. Over the nine years of the program, 165,000 men served in the state of Illinois alone. In the state, there were 140 camps, and they had about 200 men on the average. Macomb had a camp as well. It was one mile south of Macomb, and it started in September of 1934, and it was in existence till 1936. When it closed, a lot of the equipment was packed up and moved down to Rushville to be uh, in service to a camp in Schuyler County. A number of governmental agencies oversaw the work of the Corps. The top three included the U.S. Forest Service, the National Park Service, and the Soil Conservation Service. Each of them had different projects that needed labor and the CCC was the perfect solution. While the law was being crafted to establish the CCC, U.S. Senator from Illinois, Oscar DePries, made sure there was a provision that stated there would be no discrimination based on race, color, or creed. But in 1935, statistics show that African Americans only made up 10% of the Corps. There are also many regions in the country that were not open to having a camp if it contained people of color. You might be wondering if women had a role in the CCC, and the answer is yes, they did. And it was called, you're not gonna believe this, the she, she, she. Eleanor Roosevelt, working with then Labor Secretary Frances Perkin, who happened to be the first woman to hold a cabinet position, established 90 camps with which, in which women could serve. Some of the projects the CCC did in the state of Illinois you might be familiar with. They helped with the newly designated Shawnee National Forest. They built campsites and shelters and cleared trails in our state parks like Pierre Marquette, White Pines, and Starved Rock. They developed a nursery in Mason County growing over 60 million trees that was used to reforest our state. They helped local farmers with erosion control and testing new techniques that would help them manage their lands. The high unemployment rate caused by the depression was one of the reasons the CCC was developed. And for many families like the Morrow family of Macomb who had 10 children, it provided an opportunity for young men to have a job, which were hard to come by. They gained new skills, had new experiences, and were able to contribute income back to the household. Five of the Morrow sons served all across the country, as far away as California and Utah, where they put out fires and worked on ranches, to closer to home, to Peoria County and Schuyler County, where they worked with erosion control and planted trees. One son even worked in Marseilles, Illinois, rebuilding the old i &M Canal as a recreational site for our state. Another New Deal program that was active in the area was the WPA, Workers' Progress Administration. One of the buildings they built was the shelter in Glenwood Park, a beautiful stone structure. It was built in 1938 and designed by Dan Aylesford. Also, they built a boathouse in Spring Lake, but unfortunately, when the lake was expanded in 1968, it was submerged and lost. Another program that benefited from the WPA was the building of Simpkins Hall on the Western Illinois campus. In 1935, the Public Works Administration provided a way for local governments and state governments to partner with the federal to provide funding for major building projects, such as Simpkins Hall. 
The ground was broken in 1937 and the cornerstone was laid in July of that year, creating a new building for the Teachers College. The photos that we have here are from the museum's collection and illustrate how the WPA was involved in the groundwork around the building. One could imagine that Simpkins Hall is a good indication, along with the other projects, of how important work was to the community in a time when it was hard to come by. The federal government had stepped in and created some new programs. Many at some point were considered unconstitutional, but it provided a lifeline for the community. It provided a way for people to have use in meeting again. I believe that there's something here that we can learn from and maybe think about what kinds of programs today will help us in our current situation. Thanks for watching and stay tuned. There's more to come.